and welcome back to Sarah Girl Soaps. If this is your first time here, my name is Sarah and I own a small soap company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Each week I share videos on the products that I make and I also share videos of how I run my business behind the scenes. This week during a little snowstorm, I hunkered down and I decided to film a tour of my shop. So if you yourself own a small soap company or if you just enjoy watching soaps being made, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and before we get started, please hit the like button as it is a free and easy way to support my channel. Stay tuned to the end of the video so that way you can find out how to enter to win a little gift box. We got a nice little snowstorm, so this is why I decided to hunker down and finally film my tour. It's my brother, laser printer, absolutely love it. It's color and it's just, it's been a dream to have as far as printing labels and just anything really. And I just have a simple desk and a couch, a little love seat. It's where I usually hunker down and do a lot of my admin stuff. This is just where I keep a lot of my papers and labels that I use for printing. So it's just right across the way. This is the kitchenette. It has been amazing just to be able to have, you know, a whole entire kitchenette. I have a fridge, a microwave, so just, you know, for basic snacks. The blue and the yellow were not my colors. Those were the colors that were in the kitchen before I got there, but I haven't decided to invest my time or energy into painting that yet. And this is the front of the shop. I have these two large bench type things that fit the width of the windows on both sides of the shop. So I'm going to use those for displaying out um, my windows, my storefront windows. And there's the Sarah Girl Soaps sign that I ordered a couple weeks ago. On the ladder rack, I keep all of the men's scents. So they are kind of, they are separate from like all the other ones. This is going to be the gift shop side of everything. Right now I'm currently just in the stages of getting display pieces, shelving, bookshelves, that kind of stuff. I'm also currently in the process of working with and interviewing uh, local vendors. I want to do more local artists in the shop, which is something that is also like very important to this area of town as well. And then this side, my bubble scoops. I have the shampoo bars up on the top in the middle. I have some of my shower steamers and I love this little kitchen table. It has the little drop leaves so I can use that in multiple areas. If I need something that's just a little bit smaller or bigger, I can take the leaves up. I love it. And then I'm also putting the bath bombs in just a small, just a little small bowls. I got those off of Amazon. I can put a link down in the below. And then just a couple little accessories when somebody's checking out if they forgot to grab a soap dish or a soap satchel. These are the IKEA shelves. I just I love how open and clean they are. And then this cabinet, I keep all my online inventory in. So that way I make sure that I always have the inventory that it says that I have online. Highly recommend that you do not want a customer going to your site, ordering something and then coming to find out you sold out of it and you have it listed on your site because you forgot to update. This is the old insurance office and I use it as storage now. So I have a bunch of extra soaps kind of hiding in there. 
I also keep a lot of my market items, like my easy, I have two easy up tents over there in the corner. And I do have a full tub here. So this has been a nice feature for this space. So that way I can test a lot of the products. This is my packing station. Um, it's just a workbench. Again, a Facebook marketplace find. Uh, actually, it was almost free. I keep all my boxes, uh, a lot of the crinkle paper, my paper cutter. My office desk used to house me doing office work. And then if I needed to pack orders, I'd have to clear off the entire desk and use that to pack orders. So it's nice to have a separate station. On these paper storage racks, I keep all my already printed labels. These are where I just keep all the soap ends. Like when I cut the lobes of soap, I take all the ends and then I save them in order to make sample boxes. And if you don't already do sample boxes, I highly suggest it. People love them. And then I have all these bakery racks. And this is what I use to cure and store product before I package it or wrap it or label it. Top. I have Lilac Bloom, some Oatmeal, Pure Bliss, the Country Clothesline. So coming around the corner, just a couple more bakery racks. Up on top of one of my metal shelves, I have my bath bomb press. And then I keep all my extra micas. Um, these are all my nurture soap micas that I order in the bags. Here is my Buds Multibar Cutter. If you have not invested in one of these, but you are looking to, I would highly recommend. I will leave a link in my description box below to his shop. And here is where I keep my stuff for the National Shrink Wrap System. Again, wonderful investment if you're looking to scale grow save time that has been amazing and then this is my obscene kitchen aid collection i have a problem and i'm okay with it but it makes batching bath bombs amazing i just keep a little box of my dyes i'm looking to switch over to lakes but i guess both are uv sensitive and I do a lot of farmer's markets. My bath bombs are in the sun a lot and I'm just getting kind of frustrated with that. If you have any pointers or solutions to that, leave those in the comments below for me. You'll notice I have my air compressor on the bottom. I use that with the bath bomb press. These are just things I use for shower steamers, my bath bomb attachments. Here's all my palm oil. I try to keep everything on carts so that way it's just very easy to move around. I love this little kitchen cart. It gives me extra counter space. And then these are little doodads that I use when I am making soap. It's my thermometer, tablespoons. Here's my spatulas, stick blender attachments, gloves, Gotta have gloves. And then my Minnesota cookie mold. And then my stick blenders. And then a bunch more micas that I purchased when I first started as sample packs. 
And then up on top, I just have some display shelves off of Etsy. My Aztec up on top. And then the two companies I use micas through are uh, Mad Micas and Nurture Soap. I will say I lean towards Nurture Soap because they have free shipping with a small order, like a small order amount. But I do love Mad Micas. They have great quality as well. And then Nurture's or yeah, Nature's Garden. Nurture Soap, some Midwest fragrances. I just started using a couple of theirs. I did a Black Friday order to kind of try a few things out and they have stunning scents. Then some of my additives like activated charcoal, lavender buds, my ground pumice. Some holiday scents that I only use, you know, once a year. Then I have my samples and my essential oils that I use mostly for beer balms. But that is the shelf I keep all of that on. And then these bins you can get at Ikea. Love them. I use this for my Kayla Lynn clay. I want to get two more for my baking soda and for my cream and tartar. And then again on the wheeled carts. Citric acid. The Home Depot carries my baking soda and then I have the sodium hydroxide. That's just my workbench. Again, Facebook Marketplace. It was, I think, a free find. And then in the corner, I just have a bunch of my like powdered ingredients. I have some cocoa butter. So ingredients for a few different things that I make. Shampoo bars. Whip body butter, bath bombs, shower bombs, Moving on to the last rack, I just have my washing soda for my laundry soap I make. And then a lot of the items that I use while I am making products. So I have my, my microwave, I use that for like melting shea butter for my bath bombs. All of these boxes, so before I started making bath bombs, I didn't want to make bath bombs, so I used to wholesale them through Bulk Apocalypse Therapy. Those were the boxes they came into, but they have been amazing boxes for hauling all my soaps everywhere I go. They're like the perfect size to just line up all my soaps in. And then these jars, these things I use for um, mixing my lye and I get those at the dollar store. Those are my SCI noodles, along with some more baking soda that did not fit in the other container. Again, on wheels. And then just some fragrance oils and other oils, my castor oil, poly, glycerin, my alcohol, coconut oil. I do get my coconut oil from Costco, along with my olive oil. This bin is 100% coconut oil soap, all grated up, ready to go to make some laundry soap. And then just more of my ingredients for bubble scoops, bath bombs, shampoo bars. 
I'm planning on moving the fragrance oils into the storage room just to get them out of sunlight. Then I just use the simple soap molds that a lot of people start off with and get from Amazon. I'll put a link below. But they have served an amazing purpose for me. And then that box was all my molds. More sodium hydroxide. I do buy that in bulk on the palettes as well. And then I have these uh, sorting bins. And I have them, again, on one of the little rolling racks. And I have not organized them, so whatever landed in there is how they are organized right now. And then I have clipboards with my PAR sheets. Then in the back of my building, I have this awesome patio. So I cannot wait for summer when I can just put a chase lounge out there and a little grill. And I can enjoy that during the summer. Thank you for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Questions or comments about this video, or if you have ideas of other videos that you would like to see me make, please leave those below. To enter the giveaway, just leave a comment below on what your favorite part of the shop was, and make sure you subscribe and like this video. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a great afternoon, and have a great week.